It's the worst of the CBC for January 31st, 2020, the show where I watch the CBC so you don't have to. All right, so a few things to get into today. Let's do worst coverage stories before the biggest omission, which is quite clear. So quickly, I mean, I'll just say on the coronavirus and the way they're covering it, um, the one thing they are not covering, as I said before, is we're not talking about the Chinese government mismanagement of the entire thing in December. The fact that the communist government just wanted to keep this under wraps instead of solving it. The fact that the CBC never says the word communist when talking about the problems with the Chinese government shows that they're ideologically biased. Now, that's out of the way. The most biased story that, it, that, you know, that was covered today, I'll give that the silver medal, the gold medal, and it's more important today, is the Brexit. So today, Brexit is finally happening. Happy Independence Day to all the uh, UK viewers watching. Now, the CBC does the standard thing, where they cover both sides of the story by interviewing people, and one person says, yeah, I'm really happy. One person says, oh, yeah, I'm really depressed. So they're balanced, right? But then every time... They do their balance. Some people are happy. Some people are upset. Now, let's do some analysis and interview someone who's scared. Let's just interview a Remainer who's scared about Brexit and let her air all her fears for about three to four minutes about Brexit and how bad it is, and then not, not, not offer a counter, right? Never bring on a pro-Brexiteer to say, okay, here's actually the benefits uh, of Brexit. Um, you could talk about, like, you know, you don't trust the Schengen Agreement from countries just that have opened their borders, which is the obvious one. But just to assuage any uh, economic fears of Brexit, the whole concept of the European Union is a mess. And it doesn't make sense. And no one has come on to sort of make the economic argument, which would be, okay, you can't have these strong northern economies tied to the weaker southern economies in Europe. It's no good for anyone. The, actually, the only people it benefits is the ultra-wealthy people in the southern economy. So really, really, really rich Greek people and Italian people actually benefit off the Eurozone and the Euro being amalgamated. Because... You can't have strong economies like Germany tied to weaker economies like Greece. And the reason this is, is because Greece is fine when it's running off the Greek drama because it can be a tourist spot. And if the country in the currency remains low and economically weak, well, that actually incentivizes more tourists to come and buy things. Because if you buy a coffee for five Greek drachma, I believe, you know, you do the math. Hey, that's like $2.30 Canadian. Great. Let's go to Greece. However, when it becomes five euro, you just switch it to euro, well, no, you do the math. Okay, wait, that's like $9 Canadian. So then people started to go to Turkey instead of Greece because it was much, much cheaper because of the eurozone. So then you have these weaker economies, which is major attraction with tourism. That in industry gets hit. And I say the rich Greeks benefit because their drachma would then become euros, so it becomes easier to purchase international goods. Like if you want to buy high luxury goods, you purchase them on the euro, and your currency gets stronger. And this is really good for Greeks who have the purchasing power to buy international goods, which is generally the wealthier Greeks. So that's why it passed, is because the really wealthy people in the in those weaker economies, it benefited them, so they sold it to, to the others. Now, you can't have the German dollar being tied down by the Greek dollar, and you can't have the Greek dollar being propped up by the German dollar, because if the Greek dollar goes into heavy inflation, well, then they collapse the market, and that's tied to the stronger economies, and then you get the 2008 Eurozone crisis, and then now basically the German banks own Greece, right? So th there's an economic, huge economic problem with the Eurozone. Now, Britain was lucky because they kept the pound, so they can just get out of this entire mess, but there is a very strong economic argument to be made against globalist finance, we'll call it, by, you know, we should have one united world dollar. No, that's a horrible idea. That's an absolutely horrible idea. And it will destroy, it will destroy the economy. Now, moving on to the biggest omission of the day. And the biggest omission of the day, and it's more the past few days, but it still hasn't been covered. And sorry, I haven't been able to make a video of this, but Ezra Levant, okay, the, the owner of Rebel Media, he was investigated by police, and he recorded the video for writing a book about the liberals, liberinos, basically saying how the liberal uh, government operates like mob bosses. And in order to prove him wrong, they sent a bunch of thugs to his house to investigate him for writing that book. Now, the claim they're using is he wrote the book during the election, which would make his media chi bi uh, coverage biased and undeclared, like, which is so silly, because like CBC sued the Conservative Party, so shouldn't CBC be investigated for media bias? And isn't the media biased if they're being paid by the federal government, right? This is the whole media bailout. So the thing is absurd, and the whole thing is absurd in its face. The fact that, listen, this this is media, and this is openly biased media. No one debates that. No one debates that I'm that I'm not pulling for the liberal party when I make these videos. That I'm when I do interrupt, I do these. I, I don't do it from a neutral perspective, right? No one has a neutral perspective. It's an absurd qualification. And in a free country, I should be able to say, hey, listen, this is a center right program. 
and here's my views on the news and, and yada, yada, yada. So I, I don't really need to tell you, I mean, watch the video from uh, Ezra Levant himself. I don't need to tell you that it's bad and why it's bad. Instead, I will go into sort of, this is the wider problem that I talked about, is when the liberals first got reelected and I said, hey, okay, what they're going to do is uh, start to try and shut down opposition media and take control of social media um, and increase the bailout. So the bailout was $600 million. It's been up, to, uh, double to over a billion dollars. It means like $1.4 billion now in the media bailout. But now they're also going after media that they're not bailing out. So the it's essentially a, a push to monopolize the control of information. And, it, and it's really scary. And I do have... I do have some suspicions and some information that I won't release now because it's not all done. But around April, May, I think I think there should be some. I think this will all make a little bit more sense. Um, but it is scary. I mean, I I don't see post media or Sun Media or any of the mainstream um, you know outlets coming to sort of stop it in this. And if you wonder like why hasn't the media rallied around as Levant? Why is it just a few? Why is it just like Joe Warmington and and, and me and and True North Media? Um, and I think the, the answer is because one, the bailout money, but I, I think there's also some backroom dealings here where the, so the media, even the conservative media, how my lefty family thinks like national post is a far right outlet. Um, uh, they have very similar interests to the liberal party. And it's, it's when, when people talk about the swamp and Donald Trump dreams of swamp in America, the, I Canada has one tenth the population of of America, but our political swamp is a hundred times bigger than theirs. Um, so I, 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 this is a lot of swampy politics. Um, a lot of, I guess you say whatever the deep state is. I mean, this is this is it. So I will say, I mean, this is the push of the current Trudeau government. It is to monopolize the flow of information. You will see that. Facebook hate speech, Twitter hate speech, you know, Instagram hate speech laws. This will be sort of a hallmark of uh, their new government. And I do think this is a swampy enough interest that they will be able to get the votes uh, definitely from the NDP, maybe a block, maybe even some conservatives if they phrase it right. Um, so I do not see, I do foresee this being a major, major problem in Canada. So all in all, they didn't really cover much news, but, um, because they admitted the Ezra Levant thing and they have not talked about a media member being investigated by the federal government for writing a book during an election, um, this gets a 10 out of 10 on the Rosemary Barton scale. So thank you everyone so much until, until they report that it's always a 10 out of 10. Um, maybe we'll have to make it out of, uh, from 11 to 20 then, but 10 out of 10 on the Rosemary Barton scale. I'll see you all tomorrow.